everybody, my name is John DiPietro and it is my pleasure to welcome you to another edition of Looking Back at Assumption College Basketball. You know, it seems like yesterday, but actually folks, it's 50 years, 5-0, that's 5-0 years, 50 years that Assumption celebrated one of its best teams ever, the 1970-71 team, which was ranked number one in the United States by the UPI, which was the major a media outlet at the time. And we are joined in this segment to talk about Assumption Basketball by number 10 from Weehawken, Jersey City, somewhere. Jersey City. Jersey City. Mike Boylan and also manager extraordinaire, Bob Hunter. And um, Mike, welcome back to uh, Assumption. You can see I'm on campus. I'm freezing because it's in January. I know you're on a golf course with, you, you're already dressed in golf gear, ready to go out there, right? I'm ready to go, John. Let's make this quick. In Illinois. <laughs> and uh, Hunty is uh, on Starro Drive um, in traffic. So <laughs> with that being said, Hunty, take it away. I know you got a, um, a number of questions to ask Mike for this very important commemorative video. Well, excellent. so before we start, one thing I'd like to point out, Mike, is I did, I did a quick check yesterday of the records. And I believe that yours and Danny's class were the, the winningest team or the winningest four years ever at Assumption. Um, so, you know, even Grok's class, they had more losses than you guys did. So, um, and on top of that, when you graduated, if I remember correctly, you graduated basically holding all the scoring records. Well, so, I, I, I did, Bob, and um, it's kind of interesting. We were, I think, believe we were 88 and 13 over the four years. And um, it's uh, quite interesting that uh, the only records that I still hold uh, are most shots attempted. <laughs> I was just going to mention that. Uh, game, season, and career. I got the trifecta of most shots attempted. But uh, as I tell my grandkids all the time, you know, you got four other guys that can rebound and play and play defense. Just learn how to shoot the ball. So, yeah. hey, hey, Mike, I take comfort about- in that. Talk about those four other guys. It's very interesting to note that even though Assumption is located in Worcester, Mass, far away from the New Jersey border, four of the starters that year, you, Serge, Jake Jones, and Neil Burgess, were all Jersey boys. And Frankie Valley gets titles for Jersey boys when it was really you guys long before them. That's right. And I would say it probably started with Joe O'Brien, who was from uh, from New Jersey. He went to the same high school that uh, I did, as well as Serge. Um, so we had myself and Serge and Neil Burgess from Jersey City. And then from uh, South Jersey, we had uh, the famous Jake Jones uh, and uh, Scott. So... Uh, Jeff Scott. And we had a few other players on the team as well from New Jersey. Uh, uh, Charlie Alexa, which was a coach who was from Bayonne, I believe. So, uh, uh, yeah, quite a strong Jersey connection. And uh, it, also the student body was a, a little reflection of that as well. We had a lot of students from uh, New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey back then. And remember, this was the second year of Assumption being co-ed. So we had uh, quite a few uh, females on campus from the metropolitan New York area as well. Yeah, I wanted to meet a guy from Massachusetts. That's why they came up. <laughs> okay. If I, although I saying if I said that today, I'd be in trouble. Then I realized I just said it. So I, I probably you can edit this job. Trouble, but that won't make the highlight reel. I'll tell you that. I do a lot of editing with John. So, so Michael, one thing. I mean, what? When did you? When did it occur to you, or when did you think that this was going to be a really good team, a really special team? Well, if you remember, we uh, we ended the season before um, in a dramatic uh, negative fashion. Uh, at the last minute, and I'm talking about the last couple of seconds, uh, we were up by one, I believe, when had the ball. Uh, the ball got stolen from us, and uh, at the last second, a player from AIC made a basket uh, at our place in the regional finals. And um, so we had a kind of a chip on our shoulder coming into the 71 season. Uh, the thing I remember most, though, um, is that every player on our team uh, had great minutes because uh, when we came out, we came out running um, and we never stopped. I know from myself being a, a, a scorer, uh, I tried to 
get as many points as I could in the first half because I knew Joe O'Brien with, you know, 15 minutes to go in the second half was going to clear the bench and I wouldn't get any more shots. So, uh, but the great thing for that was we had, we had players with a lot of experience, uh, you know, going down seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 players with a lot of experience that we could count on later on when the games, if they got tighter, but you know, what, what would happen is, you know, we were, the Greyhounds was a great uh, nickname for us because that's exactly how we ran. In other words, I can remember Joe O'Brien telling me, when you go out on a shooter, uh, he shoots the ball. You don't go for the rebound. You take off. So I, I'd be at half court half the time by the time Danny or Serge or Jake or Neil got the rebound and uh, off to the races we went. But we were, we were a fast-paced team. Um, defense wasn't maybe one of our strengths, but we could certainly score with anybody. Well, what, you know, what part of the team, Mike, do you think was underrated? Um, and, you know, you just said defense, for instance, but I actually thought, you know, the defense was pretty damn good. Well, I, I would say the defense was unbelievable with one player. We had one player that could change the course of the game, and that was Jake Jones. Those he was, arms, right? He was undoubtedly, That's and this will go, pro scouts will, will tell you this, at the time, he was the best defensive player in the country. Uh, I can remember the Holy Cross game as an instance. They had a point guard by the name of Adams. He, he couldn't get the ball over half court uh, in 10 seconds with, with Jake hounding him, uh, or Jake would trap him in, in, in the corner. I mean, it, he was an unbelievable defensive player. And then you had, in my opinion, a very underrated player, uh, Dan Small. Uh, he was an undersized power forward who would just clean the boards. Or, in my case, when I let my man go by me to get down to the other end, I knew that Danny was behind me taking care of business. So, yeah, we, we, had, we had some guys that could play defense and rebound. But uh, our strength was definitely being able to put points uh, on a scoreboard. Mike, I think it's important also to point out that the years you were playing, there was no three-point shot. So all of these were uh, ones and twos. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, no three-point shot. That tells you how old we are. Yeah. Hey, one other thing that you had mentioned um, because of the depth of the team, the other guys that got to play a lot, the, the Tim Shea, the Bob Austin, the, the Mike Parachuk, et cetera, um, those guys – because they got to play, it wasn't just that they were at the end of the bench taking up some pine, but they pushed the starters in practice, did they not? They, they did because they knew uh, how, how they practiced in practice, how they played in practice would be re reflective of the number of minutes they got in the game. So when, when they, we came out, you know, to, to scrimmage, you know, one team against a two team or whatever, Man, they just laid it on the line because they wanted to impress the coaches to let them know that they could play and they deserve more playing time. So it would definitely help to have uh, teammates like that who, who really pushed you. And, and the other guy who I, I shouldn't, I, I should mention um, kind of the, um, the third senior on the team, uh, he, he didn't play a lot, but he was so important off the court uh, and in the locker room was Brian O'Brien. I mean, he just um, kept us loose, uh, kept us focused, uh, very encouraging. And he was great senior leadership from a guy who uh, was a role player. And no relation like, to the coach. No relation to the coach. And I think actually the first Brian O'Brien Award was presented obviously to Brian that year by the, you know, by the school. And it was for outstanding leadership in, you know, like the sixth man award or something. Yep. Local kid, too, from Worcester. Yep. His father had been, former, had been former mayor. Oh, okay. Oh, is that right? No, I didn't know yeah. that. I didn't know that. So, Mike, as, as the years flew by when we got out of there, um, what do you look back on with the, with the fondest memories of the Assumption years? I would say, um, you know, we, we, my freshman year was the first co-ed year. So it was for the college itself, it was a huge transition. Um, you know, it, uh, change was, was all around us. Um, and I think basketball brought the student body together 
um, you know, you know what the, the animal section looked like, you couldn't get a spot. And I think that that, you know, if you, I can just imagine being a freshman and, and you walk into the gym for the first time and, and you, you get a feeling of, you know, community. And uh, the fact that we were good certainly helped, but also that the entire student body was there to support you. So I think being a small school, I think at that time we only had maybe 800 students. Yeah, 70. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, you, everybody, um, on campus was at the games and that included the faculty as well as, as a local Worcester community. And as, the, as it, the season went on, especially 71, we were filling the stands up because we did become Worcester's team, uh, especially after we beat uh, Holy Cross that year in our gym. So that just solidified our place. And that was the beginning of our run in the NCAA tournament. Five year run. Yeah, I, I was there for three of them, fortunately, and then and Grok and his, his team, uh, follow, along with my brother, Jim, who was on that, that team with Grok, followed up and had another nice run, too. Now, did you play against George Gervin at all? Was that any one of those years? Yeah. I, I, I held George Gervin to 42. Oh, that's stellar defense. But the next night, I did get 45 to get my 2,000, but we did lose to Eastern Michigan in my senior year. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was wild. Who do we play junior year out in? Uh, well, your junior year, my senior year out in Evansville. Uh, let's see. We we oh. played the Tennessee State. Oh, Tennessee State. Yep. And they were six nine, six nine, six eight across the back. Right. And yeah. Southwest the had, Louisiana uh, the year before was even worse. Southwest front. Louisiana. Southwest Louisiana. Dwight Lamar. Yep, they were a good yep. team. Yep. I can remember sitting at the end of that game when Neil was assigned to cover um, Bo Pete Lamar, Lamar and Lamar walks across half court and shoots from half court. And Neil just looks at coach and says, what are you going to do? I mean, right, right, right. So oh, I you think know, the Danny other thing about those rebounder for that game. What's that? I think Danny was the outstanding rebounder for that Southwest game against right. all the six eights and six nines. Yep. Yep. He could rebound. Well, we are still planning, um, you know, Hunty and I talked about a year ago about this to get everybody back on campus December, two months ago, to be there for the start of the season instead of waiting to like February when you could, you know, get messed up with a snowstorm or something like that. But obviously COVID has, uh, has changed those plans, but um, we're certainly going to do a live event, a live reunion when the time comes for that and certainly hope that you'll get back for that. I will I'm definitely. Yep. Yep. Hunty. Final Do you want to talk about Harry Laurie at all, Mike? <laughs> I'll save that for Neil. Save that for Neil. Yeah. Okay. You know, there's some other things I, I, I had on my list here. Are we off camera now or no, we're on, but go ahead. All right. None of it will get you arrested, right? No. You gotta put Oh, I know. You should check with Neil on this. Um, I believe that year that uh, during the regular season, we called a total of two timeouts. That's probably right. That's, that is just when you think about it for the entire season, two timeouts. That's, that's how dominating that team was. Well, and the other thing I told some people the other day, um, Usually within three or four, three or four minutes into the game, we'd be up by 15 to 20 and the other team would call a timeout. And, you know, it was just amazing what those, um, what those situations would be. Yep. Well, I think Mike, if I remember right, it's still a record according to the record book, the central Connecticut championship game for the Northeast regionals. We had one turnover. Yeah. The entire game. And we only put up, they only put up 95 points. Yeah, and I can remember, you know, at the end of that game, you know, two or three minutes to go when the, the crowd is filing out and um, people were just commenting to us as they're passing the bench that uh, nobody can touch you guys. That was just an incredible performance. We just swept right through that regional. And um, yeah, like Sacred I said, Heart. that was uh, we played Sacred the Heart. beginning of a couple of them. 
or I don't know who we played, but I think the Sacred Heart on Friday night in Central Connecticut on Saturday night. Was it because it was at Central? That's right. It was at Central. Well, we played Sacred Heart because I remember I had a couple guys from Jersey on that team. Yeah. Uh, we played them one night, and I think we played Central Connecticut uh, another night. Yeah. 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 Well, Mike Boylan, we want to thank you so much. We look forward to seeing. Hey, great. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, and I look forward to getting together. And. Uh, Thank you so much. So with that being said, everybody, this is a look back on Assumption College basketball. If you liked it, there'll be a button down in the bottom right hand corner, hit that subscribe button. And then every time we do a new one of these, and we're going to try to reach every member of the team. Luckily, everybody from the team is still with us. They're all still alive. So uh, we're going to try to do our best to get the whole team and um, everybody will have their memories to share. So with that being said, on behalf of Mike Boylan, Bob Hunter, my name is John DePietro, bidding you a fond adieu from the Alaska Gymnasium. <laughs>